Hi guys, I'm Brooke and Pippa is all the way back there. I don't know if you can see her, but she's back there. She's sleeping. We've had a, a, we've had a long day for some reason and she's back there. But if you don't know us already, I am Brooke and that is my dog Pippa and we travel full time in my 2004 Honda CRV. And today we are talking about safety while living in the car. Ugh, safety, safety, safety. My comments are filled to the brim about if I feel safe, if I get scared, all of that stuff. And I'm going to let you know off the top. The short answer is no, but I am obviously going to go through and explain why and all of the factors that go into that because I know this seems like such a scary thing for people to do, especially for um, anybody who wants to do it by themselves, whether they have a dog or a partner or not. In my experience, I'm coming up in like two weeks as a year on the road in the car and I have not had any major safety incidents at all this entire time. So from somebody who has now been on the road for two and a half years total and one full year in the car, I can say that the chances if you follow your gut instincts and you follow like what makes you feel safe, you are not probably going to have any problems. Statistically, it's way lower than if you ever lived in an apartment, a house, etc. So I'm just going to address that right off the top. Anyways, moving on. Like I said, the very, the biggest, biggest thing I can always tell someone is to just get in tune with your gut. Your gut instinct is going to tell you everything that you need to know. If you pull into a campsite, if you pull into a parking area, if you pull into a place and you don't feel safe and your gut is telling you something is wrong, you need to just leave end of story you just need to leave my gut instinct is my biggest safety measure and it is what i follow all the time i am very in tune with it and it sucks sometimes to be driving and to be tired and then to get somewhere and feel like it is not the right fit and it is not a good setup and to have to move on but at the end of the day my safety comes before everything else and I will just move on. Same thing as if I'm like sleeping and in the middle of the night, all of a sudden I wake up and I just feel like something is off. I will leave. It is so annoying. Don't get me wrong, but it again, my safety is top priority. And if I've already had a few hours of sleep and I just have this gut feeling that something might happen, I'm going to leave the area because at the end of the day, everybody considers people as the problem but it could be weather it could be animals it could be something completely different that I just have this gut feeling that I need to go and I will say that's happened like less than you know a handful of times out on the road but I always follow it every time and I've never regretted leaving a situation so let's ha talk about how I travel versus everybody else maybe that you might watch on social media or that you see. So I do disperse camping. Even out through my back window, you can see that I'm kind of like on a back road and I'm just kind of parked here and whatever. There's people driving by, there's people stopping. <laughs> And things like that and these kinds of things happen all the time but I'm sitting here with my doors locked I'm sitting here just kind of hanging out and you have to get used to these types of situations because it's I'm in an area where there is a like tourist attraction down the street that person just might be confused they might be just looking for cell phone service not every person is out to get you you have to remember that we are a very individualistic society they're probably not thinking about what I'm doing sitting in my car right here right now at all so that was a great example that I like caught on camera of just things that like just don't sit here with your doors unlocked if that person did have like an issue you know don't be sitting here and giving them free reign of your car door just like being open um don't pick that moment to go outside and like leave your driver's side door open not every single thing needs a reaction and i think that's what i've learned most on the road is that most people are out here just doing their own thing and at the end of the day most of it's not about you that also goes for people pulling in really late at night that is where people get the most scared i think when you're dispersed camping or even when you're camping at a campground or something when people are pulling in late at night because I don't pull in late at night. I always get somewhere during the day 
kind of suss out the situation. I've camped here plenty of times, so like this kind of stuff is very normal here. People get out, they take breaks, we're right off the highway. So that person is probably honestly just like reorganizing their car before they get back on the road. And that's very normal. But at night, things feel different, right? Night, everybody like feels like it's personal and it's about them and if somebody lingers too long but if you think about you when you've maybe pulled in somewhere late or you've never been somewhere before and you're driving a little bit slow it's not about the people who are in the cars it's because you're trying to figure out where you are is that your campsite number i can't really see it and like that's why people are driving slow you have to remember that not everything warrants like a very strong reaction right and if that person has not been in the campground or been in the camping area since you've been in there and you have maybe your window covers up and you're just laying in bed, they don't know who you are either. So I think that's the other side of safety that people don't consider is that it is a high risk for someone to be away from society. So if you're dispersed camping, which is where most people get freaked out as being away from people right like that's why i'm addressing this because this is how i travel um say you pull into the woods for the first time that night even if you know the area super well and you decide to try to pick out a car to like i don't know steal something from you are taking a really big risk in the woods even as a criminal walking up to a strange car right you don't know who's in there what weapons they have what their mindset is um what they might do when they're confronted etc and those kinds of things are what you need to remember when you're in your own car right like it is just as much for a risk to a criminal to pick out a random car that happens to be yours to confront somebody at the same time as you thinking that they are coming to do that now, it would be totally different if you were in a rest area or a Walmart or something like that where like people are just trying handles to see if doors are unlocked to like steal cash or change or, you know, phones or whatever out of your car, like the petty theft kind of side of it. Whereas in the woods, it's just a different story. Also, it's super high, hard to hide in the woods. I know it seems really easy to hide in the woods, it's really hard because have you ever tried to drive in the pitch black through trees? You need some sort of light. And you know what light does? It lets everybody know that you're there and that you're coming. Whether you're a criminal, whether you're lost, whether you're just trying to find a campsite at night, everyone's gonna see your headlights. Everyone's gonna see you pull in, um, including, you know, the person you're maybe approaching. So I feel like it just doesn't happen a whole lot. And it's definitely not happening on foot a whole lot either because you just can't see the risk of injury for someone that wants to be a criminal doing it in a place that is super dark, super vast and has like almost no return on investment. I think it's just not happening a lot. I want to convince you so badly that like the woods and all of that for people are not as bad as trying to camp in cities and highly populated areas. Now, animals, that's a different factor. That is something you need to look up on your own time and I can do a different video on animal safety when you're camping out in the desert, out in the woods, etc. But especially in the desert, you can see people coming from miles away. In the woods, you can see headlights coming from pretty far away to have time to prepare, to have time to do all of the things that you need to do. Does that mean sleep with your car doors unlocked and just hang out and have not a worry in the world no of course not you need to follow your guide and you have to follow some guidelines but at the same time i'm just trying to make it known like some of these things that you might consider a huge factor may just not be as much of one okay so then the second thing about that right is that if you are seeking out dispersed camping right like again not in a campground not in a paid site at a campsite um, you're seeking out some sort of free dispersed camping. You have looked up that area. You've wanted the experience of being outside of a campground. So the people who are going to be in that dispersed area are also looking for that type 
of experience. So when you get out there, let me tell you, I watched hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on boondocking and dispersed camping. I thought I was going to be out there by myself for miles and miles and miles. No, especially if you have cell phone service, you are not the only one there. Everybody knows about those places and all of those people are there to camp and have a good time camping with the peace and tranquility of a dispersed campsite. They don't want to be packed in like sardines like at a campground. So you're not going to have a neighbor that's right up next to you that you need to feel unsafe about. Like you're spread out but then you're also spread out in camping with other camping enthusiasts and like outdoor enthusiasts. These people are not the creepy weirdo in the woods hiding out and waiting for convenient crime because again the return on investment on that for a criminal I think is very very low. Um, it's going to be the person who really likes off-roading. It's going to be that person that's out there with their boyfriend, girlfriend, or partner who just wants to have a campfire and look at the stars in tent camp. It's the person who's out there with their buddies just having a drink or something and going to bed early. Or it's that person that's stopping overnight because they're on a five-state road trip. It's definitely not like someone who is looking to commit crime because the reason crime happens in cities the most is because there's the most opportunity. There is just less and less opportunity the more dispersed kind of camping you get. Plus you're also with like-minded people who like to camp. They're not criminals, they're somebody who's just like you. Now, am I saying every person is like the best person on the world if they're a camping enthusiast? Of course not. You have to keep your guard up to a certain degree, but it doesn't mean that you have to be afraid to go outside or to interact with nature or do anything else. Now, let's get into some of the actual like safety things I do that make me feel comfortable in these areas, but I just wanted to get like that huge dispersed camping disclaimer like out of the way. <laughs> So the first thing I do is obviously when I'm just sitting and chilling, I always lock my doors. My, I know that it seems like very open right now because you guys can see out, but I have 5% tint in the back and I have 30% in the front um, on both windows. So, and I'm not going to be sleeping here. I'm sitting here because I'm filming because it's good lighting <laughs> and like I'm going to move before I go to bed. But people cannot just like see in here, right? And I'm also sitting here with my doors locked. I don't sit in strange areas or in areas with lots of people driving by with my doors unlocked. That just doesn't seem right. Just the same way as if you're sitting in, you know, a, your office parking lot on your lunch break, you probably shouldn't be sitting there with your car unlocked while you're eating your lunch. You have to kind of think of it the same way. Second, when I go somewhere to sleep, I, if I have never been there before and I don't know the ins and outs of the area, I like look around. I drive around a little bit. I kind of see who's in the area. I kind of see what's going on. Are there a lot of people partying? Are there a lot of trash everywhere? Is there a lot of people with dogs off leash or kids running around or things that make me kind of like uneasy about the situation because if people aren't respecting their neighbors that are already there so if they're being loud if they're drinking like excessively and like doing all these things if they're letting their dogs run around if they're letting their kids run around without any supervision there's just a higher probability of something to go wrong that is just like a very clear sign to me that like these people might not be very considerate and i can just remove myself from the situation because i'm one person with one car with one dog and i can drive away pick a new spot. You don't have to deal with um, that kind of situation. So I always look out for those things. And then I find a spot where I'm pulled in where someone can't maybe pull up behind me or like block me into my campsite. I always, if there's only one entrance to my campsite, um, I pull in so I can be able to pull out immediately. I park so that I can pull out if I need to without doing a lot of like 3.16 point turn maneuvers. Um, and that is just something to consider. Like even if say in the middle of the night there was like a severe storm warning, it may not even be for a person who's pulling up behind you. You need to be able to get out of the situation if you need to, or like say I wake up and I'm having like kind of like a medical emergency or something and I need to drive myself to the hospital, I don't wanna be doing a 16 point turn to get out of a campsite. Sometimes it's not just about people's safety, it's about like your safety. Um, 
So at the end of the day, if I've never been somewhere before at all, and I'm like, I'm like, I have to sleep here, but maybe I don't want to stay here long term. That is when I will let Pippa out at a rest area or something first. So then when I pull into the campsite, I can literally throw up all my window covers. No one sees me here and I can go to bed. Um, that's where like that kind of safety comes in of just being like anonymous, right? Like they don't really know who pulled in. They don't know who's sitting in that car. They don't know who's in there. Um, and you just kind of have the precaution of being a mystery because they don't know what they're up against if they come up to you, right? Um, while I'm sleeping, I obviously, I keep everything in the car in the same place all the time. My keys are always in the same place. My protection items are always in the same place. I park my car a certain way every single time and that's up to each individual person. I cover my windows the same way every single time um, and to make sure that I have all of that stuff in place. So that monotony and that routine can really help you as opposed to like in an apartment when you have a routine it can actually work against you because you're going to the same location every single night but when you go to bed whereas when you're out here you only see those people for a few days at a time and then you move on so if you're doing the same safety precaution it's really hard for people to pick up on what that is and it's going to be different for everybody of what makes you feel safe some people like to sleep with their keys um you know like on their pillow or like on a lanyard or something and keep it like basically within arm's reach i like to keep mine in a different area and obviously i'm not going to stay on here where i like to keep them but i like to keep them in a certain area so then in the dark if i can't see anything i can still grab my keys and i can pop them right in the ignition and hop in the front seat and go um i also the next biggest thing is just don't cause confrontation. Um, I'm a very strongly opinionated person. I'm a very strong-willed person. I do, in personal conversations and personal arguments, I do not back down. Um, but at the end of the day, when I'm out here by myself, I don't draw attention to myself if it's completely unnecessary. So for an example, if somebody maybe has like dogs off the leash and I'm getting really annoyed about it because like they're running up to the car and I can't let Pippa outside at all or I feel like I can't go outside. Instead of continuously confronting people and like possibly having them retaliate or do anything like that, I just move. I, I just move and it's annoying and it's every single time I hate that I have to be like the bigger person and just move but at the end of the day it keeps me safer it keeps Pippa safer because I'm not confronting people constantly if someone's being really loud if someone's running their generator if someone's like running their diesel truck all night I will just like literally pack up the stuff and move if it's something that's annoying me that much because I just do not want to open anything up to retaliation I just choose to be the person that's non-confrontational. So same thing, I don't have any stickers or anything like identifying whether I am a this supporter or a that supporter or a this or that on my car either because I don't want to be causing any sort of argument or something based on how I politically affiliate or socially affiliate with stickers on my car. Am I saying that every sticker or something is bad for you? No, like if it's like something travel based, obviously throw those all over your car. Like if you're really proud of something and you're willing to really do that, that is totally fine. But for me, traveling by myself, I do not feel safe having certain types of stickers on my car and I won't put them on my car. So then I don't have to discuss them if somebody starts drinking and somebody sees it and they want to talk about it and maybe I don't have the right answer for them so same thing and then obviously with social media I don't post where I am I don't tell you guys where I am I don't post things in real time everything you see even if it feels so genuinely in real time like it's happening right now it's not so it keeps me safe just by keeping me out of somebody's mind in a certain area so even if you have 10 instagram followers don't tag your location you never know who those 10 people are um that are watching or you know something else just wait wait till you get home i would say car camping road tripping traveling sleeping in your car etc is all something that 
you can research to death, right? Like you can research it all day long and it is just one of those things that you have to learn what your threshold is for how you feel safe and how you prefer to travel and go with your gut on that and stand by it and put your safety above everything else. So it's just one of those things that I wish I could give you all the answers and you could have them written down on a piece of paper to be prepared for that first camping trip of yours. And at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you, not what's best for me. And you can research every tip and trick in the book and those things may not work for you and you may find that something else works for you. But at the same time, like you have to try things to feel like you know how to prepare for them the next time. So none of us are experts when we start. None of us know exactly how to do all of this when we start. So you have to do what's best for you and then go from there and build off of it. Now, if you have like, an experience say that wasn't unsafe but you just maybe didn't get a lot of sleep or you were up all night listening to noises and listening to people and all of that that's definitely not a sign that you should just like never go camping again or never go on a road trip again that is a sign that you just need to get more comfortable with it and give yourself some time not everybody's perfect and relaxed in new situations at the first time like have you ever gone and met up with a new friend group or joined a new club or moved to a new area or even stayed in a new city even if it's in a hotel with a door that locks and everything like that um you have to give yourself time to adjust and to figure things out and i just wish that people would not be so deterred by crime shows and podcasts culture of like true crime and making it like this obsession and um all of this because there's so many gorgeous places you can go there's so many wonderful humans you can meet out on the road that not everybody is out to get you and the people that are out to get you honestly will make themselves known if you are in tune with yourself and you have a good gut around you um you're gonna know that that person is off if the more in tune you are with yourself but i would never ever ever in a million years trade the experiences i've had in the last two and a half years um for the safety of a lock and key at an apartment because honestly i've had more break-in attempts living in apartments townhouses etc than i ever have been being on the road and those moments in my apartment i wish i didn't have to just hide inside and call 911, and that i could have just jumped in the front seat and driven away and driven myself out of the situation they can move pretty quick and if you know where your keys are and you know where all your stuff is and you know your plan in the back of your head you really should have um not a lot of issues so I hope this helps a little bit. I'm not going to get into super specifics on like weapons or pepper spray or this or that because I don't like to share what I like to use because part of my safety plan is to be secretive about those things, like just the same as my location, etc. But um, I really encourage you all to try what you think is best. Fortunately, there are incidents that do happen in the world. That is the reality. I, we, I wish we lived in a world where everything was perfect and we can't. Um, obviously make that happen but at the end of the day i really hope that none of those things hold you back from finding your own experiences and finding your own adventure and really getting out there because it's absolutely not as unsafe as people make it out to be and there can be some really amazing times that you can have out on the road and i just want you to experience them so i hope this helps and we will see you guys on the next one bye